Hello guys and girls, Kirsten Swales in my SIBO video series. This one is on the SIBO mistakes that everybody makes. I see them all the time and they're avoidable. So let's go through them. So the first one would be not knowing which kind of SIBO that you have. So it's very important to do your SIBO test. I made a whole different video on that one. And when you do the SIBO test, you'll find out whether or not you have SIBO. You'll also find out which kind of SIBO you have which is either hydrogen dominant SIBO or methane dominant SIBO. And the treatment protocols that you need will be different. So if you choose to go the antibiotic route, which I don't recommend, there'll be different antibiotics. If you choose to go yes, the herbal antimicrobial route, there'll be different herbs that are beneficial for one or the other. So very important to know what kind of SIBO you have. So test. Another mistake that people make is ignoring the possibility that there might be other gut, gut infections present. So they're just like there is SIBO, there can also be CFO, small intestinal fungal overgrowth. There can also be other parasites. There could be roundworm, so common where I live in Bali, they say that 90% of people in Indonesia have parasites. You can also get parasites like blastocystitis hominis or D. fragilis. So making sure you don't have any of that going on as well, because it needs to be addressed. Another super common mistake is not following a tailored dietary approach because there's different diets out there for SIBO again there's a different video on that the one I like is the biphasic diet by Dr. Norella Jacobi but that's always a starting point so you start there and then you tailor it to you because just because something's on the list doesn't mean that your body's going to like it and then flip side if there's something that you know your body does really well with it doesn't it might mean that you can put it back in so listening to your body over lists but it is important to follow some sort of adapted diet because you need to reduce the fermentable carbohydrates while treating SIBO and just after as well to avoid the relapse. Otherwise it's like you're swimming upstream, you might not really get anywhere. So another mistake is expecting one round to fix you. SIBO can be a bit of a side bustle. Sometimes one round is enough, but sometimes you will need multiple rounds of SIBO. It doesn't mean that you failed, it doesn't mean that your body is broken, it's just SIBO is quite tricky to eradicate. So be open to that possibility. It doesn't mean that you're going to be six, 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 six and better. You get better as you go through. So even if you need to do another round in a couple of weeks or a couple of months, you might even feel pretty darn good there. But you just need to continue treatment for a little bit longer to make sure that you get it out. Because if you don't get it all out, it just comes back. So another mistake that some people make is maybe seeing in the Facebook groups that peppermint is amazing for SIBO or berberine is amazing for SIBO and then just using that one single antimicrobial and expecting it to work. So different types of SIBO require different treatments and you often need to rotate them as well because the bacteria are kind of clever. They can become resistant to the same antimicrobial if you use it and then some people use that same one again for another round of treatment. So you often need to rotate, you will often need to be very specific about which antimicrobial you have and you're probably going to need more than one. So all the information is out there, but I do recommend investing in working with someone that knows what they're doing. You're gonna save yourself so much time, energy, and money. So another mistake that people make is with probiotics. They don't always contribute to more of the overgrowth, but they can. So it's important to have them at the right time and to have the right strains that you need. And also we're looking out for the prebiotics in the probiotics. Because some people just think, oh, probiotics are going to help solve everything. They don't. They can make it worse. You need to do it at the right time and the right ones. I did another video on SIBO and probiotics which you can go back and watch. The next one is biofilms. So not too many people know about the term biofilms. So if they, if they say like just two weeks of infection, so a lot of people have been longer. <laughs> they say that just two weeks after having an infection your body can start to produce these biofilms. Most people I know have been sick for way longer than two weeks, sometimes their whole life. So the bacteria will produce a biofilm, it protects them. So if they've got this biofilm surrounding them, they're nice and happy in their little home. So when we go in with the herbal antimicrobials and antibacterials, we want to kill the bacteria. But if they're hiding in the biofilm, it's hard to get in there. So a biofilm disruptor can pierce that little biofilm and allow the antibiotics and the antimicrobials to get in there. Some examples would be proteolytic enzymes like seropeptidase or N-acetylcysteine. So that is a biofilm disruptor. And then if you want to get better, you can't fail to address the underlying cause of your SIBO. 
Sometimes it's simple, not nice, but simple like it could have been about a food poisoning. So then that was your issue, you resolve the bacterial overgrowth and it, the relapse tends to be lower. You might just be more sensitive to food poisoning so you take extra care when travel. But then sometimes it can be adhesions, which like I say, especially after abdominal surgery, where the scar tissue doesn't heal so well and it slows things down. It's like imagine if your hair gets stuck in the shower drain. It, those can still move through, but not as effectively. It can be other gut infections. It can be low stomach acid. You need to address what caused the SIBO so that it doesn't come back. This last one is really frustrating um, and it's really sad and I, I get really, I just, want, I just want to draw these people out and, so, and I'm not just saying this because I'm a naturopath that works in SIBO, it's because it, it was a mistake that I kind of made so when I first got diagnosed I dived into Google and then I got into the Facebook groups and then from everything I was reading in these Facebook groups I thought my life was over because no one was ever getting better and they were like sick forever. The mistake these people were making is that they weren't seeking help. So I did seek help, so at the time I had some knowledge of SIBO, but I wanted to speak to someone that had gone through SIBO and had fixed their own SIBO and was a few steps ahead of me. So I consulted with a, nat a naturopath that was more experienced at the time in SIBO than me. And so people will make the mistake of gathering all this information from blogs and Facebook groups and this product helps Susie, so it's going to make me better. We've all got different reasons, we've all got different things going on, we all require different treatment. And so I highly, 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 highly recommend, if it's not me, there's someone else, and you don't need to be restricted to your local area. Lots of us work online now, all my consults are online. And it just helps you get clarity and someone can help you see the bigger picture and get a plan. So definitely, 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 highly recommend working with someone and not just getting stuck in those Facebook groups. Because there's often, um, I find, Shame. And when I was going through SIBO, I was desperate as well. So I often get that feeling of desperation in the Facebook groups. But it's like, but why don't you just ask for help? So if I was to break my computer, I, I know quite a little bit about technology, but if I lost all my work, I would take it straight to the computer store to get someone else to fix it. And I'm sure a lot of people would do the same, but it's different when it comes to our bodies because our digestive system, we can still function in day-to-day -day life. So people tend to put it off, put it off. Oh, and I can figure it out. I can figure it out totally don't need to do that because there's people that know it inside out and can help you get better quicker. So try to avoid those mistakes and you should be a long way ahead in fixing your SIBO and getting back to eating normally again and living life because it's really cool. You're amazing. Thanks for watching. Go check out my other ones if you haven't already. Any questions, email me at kirsten at kirstenswales.com. See you soon.